parte de esta oferta que tiene. ¿Tú sabías que si tienes una tarjeta de la Curazao o has tenido crédito con la Curazao, prácticamente ya tienes el 50% de toda la decisión hecha para que te puedan ayudar a comprar un automóvil? Y lo más interesante también de cómo funciona esto es que la Curazao está poniendo de su parte. Y si tú adquieres un automóvil de descuento, el Ford de Montebello, la Curazao también va a pagar hasta 250 dólares a la cuenta que tú tengas con ellos. Le van a dar un crédito cuando tú vas y obtengas un automóvil ya sea nuevo o semi nuevo en Ford de Montebello. Por eso es que si usted tiene una cuenta con la Curazao, escuche bien el número de teléfono. Es el 1-800-548-7168. <risa> Professor Kales in the building. What's good? It's Kelly, though, right? Yeah, it is. It's Kelly. Okay, so Kales is kind of like, you know how they do, what do they call her, Kelly? Kales. Yeah. Is that like kind of a nickname for you? Well, you know, it's kind of like I consider myself to uh -oh. be like um, a block scholar, you oh. know, a scholar of the streets. Oh. And so like Professor that. Kales is just a shortened way to identify myself even though it's Kelly because I cold switch and I can get very professional on you okay. and then you know Kels just represents my little gutter side that I like to bring out every now and then because don't forget she <laughs> is from Compton you gotta represent yes. right yeah. you know what it's so funny I mean like Compton has been on the map of course since the NWA or, or the times like that mm -hmm. but it's like right now it's like I don't know if it's just on my mind because of the movie but every time I look up it's someone else from Compton I'm excited about it. You yeah, know, I, I, I really feel it. like um, there's been seeds that's been planted for mm -hmm. the city of Compton, mm -hmm. and right now those seeds are coming to harvest. Okay. And I think that it goes back to even before, um, like around the, a little bit after maybe like the Civil Rights Movement, when you start to see uh, different movements and things happening and coming about, mm -hmm. I think that was an opportunity for blacks to start planting seeds because Compton has good people, mm -hmm. you know? And I just feel like it's time. The generation, we're the generation that's really wanting to come back we're grown. We don't necessarily want to leave our city. Mm -hmm. We want to come back and provide and give back. And give back. And that's what where we met at the event where right. um, Mr. Kendrick Lamar got his keys to the city that day. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dot. Well, Compton, K Dot, yeah, who um, is also representing Compton, got awarded the keys to the city, and I think he had some initiatives that he has going on with the city that he's right. giving back with the school. He's always giving back to. Uh, I know he gives back to Centennial and giving back to lots of different after school programs. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have someone who has made it, mm -hmm. but still finds a need and has a heart to want to give back. Right. So for that. I love Kendrick Lamar. Right, we love him too. I mean, <laughs> right. I think he's a really cool dude. I think he was like a breath of fresh air with kind of like when his album came out. Some yeah. of the stuff, you know how like everybody's album, you, you listen and then you're like, okay, it's a new artist. You know, you have to take it all in. But I just remember liking certain songs right. and I remember Game had him on a song before his, um, the, um, what was it, City? The City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yep, I was yep. like, I used to love that song. And I was like, who is this guy? And then finally when he came out, I was like, oh, okay. Then when he did the cypher, I was like, okay, I'm a fan. Exactly, mm -hmm. my husband put it, put me on to him a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we, we've been a fan when he was K-Dot, so. I've, when he dropped a song called Amelie a while back, I just was like, oh my gosh. Was that a mixtape type of song? Yeah, it was a mixtape, and the girls did a it. dance to it. Oh, so see? We was trying to go in the archives for Kendrick Lamar to let mm -hmm. them know, you know, mm -hmm. we got some for you. We longtime fans. We long time. We so. original. We OGs with it. So that was really good. Mm hmm. So you're about, what, 100 strong, I heard, with your group as far as like. Uh, you know. 
growing. <laughs> we are trying to get there, you know. Team I haven't I haven't taken an official count. Right. But the numbers are steadily climbing and mm -hmm. I feel like to whom much is given much is much is required. Mm -hmm. So, I'm grateful. More importantly, I feel like God has given me the opportunity to be a leader. Mm -hmm. So, with that, there's so much accountability. Right. And I'm surprised that we keep getting droves of young girls who are flocking to the group. And then since then, we've gotten a push for, well, hey, how come you don't have boys? So last I, week we I started. I about that yes. because when you had a guy open it. Exactly. So he's part of your team. Yes, but he's not a diva, so <laughs> let's get that clear. Um, he right. is a royal, mm -hmm. and it represents just being a royalty of um God, you know, mm -hmm. just representing your royalty in mm -hmm. the world and not necessarily having to conform to it, mm -hmm. but being able to be a change agent and be able to make changes. So they're called the Royals of Compton, the boys. I so love it. I love it. Not to be mixed with the gangs that use the, the Royals on their, um, you know, stuff. See, but, she really got her hood card because I didn't know nothing. About right. That. No, actually, I'm my like, brother, I'm, my brother mm -hmm. put me on. He was like, look now, you know, people use that. And I was like, really? Mm -hmm. People use sports? As their gang logos? And he was like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, we're going to be like royals with I, crowns. Well, like hats, I guess. We'll yeah, see, exactly. Like, oh, I know what you mean. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, like, exactly. See, we, we're not gangbangers. But I understand. We know the hood. Right. Well, I want to <laughs> get... You are not, cousin. Where are you from? See? But, you know, we had to call him out. This is my cousin. Say hi, LaRon. Hi, LaRon. Nice to meet you. You already know Wolf Gang, right? Wolf Gang, Puck. I always want to add the Puck at the end. I think it's a restaurant. He might not like that. Sorry. Wolf Gang, though. I like your hat, though. Wolf tickets. Wolf tickets. Mm hmm. So, we're going to get into I want to show everybody. We're going to talk about a wrap up of what went on this week and stuff. So, I'm going to let you Let's watch a little um, Oscar stuff. Do you want to start with the Oscar stuff or you want to show them a little bit of your video? Thing? You know what? Let's. Uh, Professor Kells, you guys, I'm going to get out. I'm going I'm to say some stuff. So, you know, don't mind. I'm going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. Keep it 100. So let's start with whatever you want to start with, and then I'm going to give my take on it because I got a few cents. You do? Okay, so we're going to start with, instead of starting with her video, we're going to start with, where did we go first this weekend? We went to the Viviana, right? Okay, let's go. We went Gospel Goes to Hollywood. All right. So let's go to Gospel Goes Hallelujah. to Hollywood. Hallelujah. The Oscar Week of Faith. Where, right. um, we, let me just tell you a little bit about this. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yes, but Gospel Goes to Hollywood, just in case, it's their fourth annual event. Mm -hmm. And they honor um, people that are promoting and encouraging faith. One of them was Robbie Reed, who's a, um, a casting agent. I mean, a cast. Do you call her agent? Casting director. Director, sorry. Okay. I wanted to get it correct because you know. Um, Mickey Taylor, who is the Essence editor. Um, no. Is her name? I should look at the... Okay, well, why don't we look at the press release so that way I don't have to... It is Mickey Taylor. Don't be trying to correct me. She's the editor-at-large for Essence Magazine who also had a huge weekend this week. They did the um, Hollywood's, um, the brunch for women, the women's okay. brunch, Women of Hollywood. They honored Nina Shaw, uh, Debbie Allen, and... So not, um, oh, no, Tracy Ellis Ross. Okay. It was really, really good. It aired on on. on. So I'm sure you can catch the rerun. But well, let's go to this Gospel Goes to Hollywood. Styles here and we're here at the fourth annual Gospel Goes to Hollywood. What's going in? Congratulations on your director. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can't take the credit for it. Um, they actually called me to direct and like you said it was my directorial debut so it was myself getting my feet wet, um, trying and changing from in front of the camera to behind the camera and being able to do something different and to fulfill a passion that I've had for a, a long time now and ready to pass the torch. So I realized being in that chair, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely did, and I, I have a different and another passion for Lisa Ray, and that I can help bring some creativity to the screen other than just being in front of the camera. So I really love it. I'm actually doing a play now called Married but Single, and that's a different type of skill level. You know, that's a an action, and there is no cut. I mean, you start and you finish at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. So I, I'm I'm glad I'm working. I'm glad that a lot of us are on TV right now. That our stories are being told. That we're able to slip into characters that people are enjoying for entertainment purposes. 
and that I'm able to be at award shows like the Gospel Award Show, saying that there's a faith-driven entertainment business that we in. And without that faith, that we won't be happy anyway. Congratulations on being honored tonight. Thank you. How does it feel to be honored tonight? It's very exciting. I feel very humbled. You know, I don't take anything for granted. I do when I do. I believe God bless me. Here to cats gave me the gift of talent. I, you know, for talent, I believe that was gift. So I'm just feeling really humbled. What do you feel about Hollywood right now? The diversity is what we make it. You know, with the concept. You know, I think we need to represent the world. You know, and around you, there's not one of these things. So keep that in mind. I think it was all right. Congratulations. How do you feel about tonight? Well, no, we're having fun. Uh, it's all great. Well, look, I, look, I'll pause if you breathe in. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, and so, uh, of course, this is a different type of program. Uh, of course, gospel goes goes to Hollywood. and But it's still great. And one of the hours that makes listen, black folks, we win something. We, we, we first say, uh, thank the Lord. Uh, so we must round. So you got you got to have a deep uh, in there. But one thing I think is all different. And we can be honest and great. But a lot of people don't forget that a lot of it is hard to maintain when you have a test as opposed to stuff. Uh, and then I also go up. Her book is on Fulfill the Enjoy Balance. I do a lot of things. I believe who you are, the essence of who you are. A part of who you are means you can set it aside on the shelf and take it off. The essence means all your decisions are made through your faith prism. To me, I think that's the difference. And so for me, it's the essence of who I am. Got you. Is your wife who puts this out there? Let's get this real clear, okay? Ladies, stop thinking a woman has to dress a dude. My closet is bigger than my wife's closet. She don't dress me. She don't know what's in my closet. Uh, and so, no, my wife didn't pick out nothing. Nothing. This is all rolling. I don't do no stylist. My daddy knew how to raise a son to dress. You got it. You got it together. That's how we do it. Coming from the Bible Belt, this is kind of common in where I'm from. And it's not so common here in California. So I'm just... I'm, I'm thrilled to be here at Gospel Goes to Hollywood. I think what a better place to on a beautiful sunny day to praise the Lord. It is an honor and a pleasure and a privilege. Not many people get asked to be or honored to be a, a, receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. And um, yeah, I've had to do a lot of sort of looking and saying, well, why is this and what does this mean? And when I look back over the course of my life, you know, and I sort of acknowledge some of the things that I've done that I feel good about, then, you know, I am forth and I'm willing to accept support because um, I put a lot into this business over the last 50 years. And we're back. So that was a little bit of Gospel Goes to Hollywood, how keeping the faith and everyone that's involved, um, they honored some great people. Um, it was a lot of people that came out. It was a nice sunny day. It actually was burning up on the road. <laughs> But it was good, and I think we ended up going to another gifting suite and stuff after that. But if you're just tuning in, I got Professor Kells, Miss Kelly Berry. Hey. Of Divas of Compton. Right, Divas. Right, right, right. So tell us a little bit about, I know for myself what Divas stand for, but explain what Divas means for you. Okay, well, uh, Diva stands for Divine Innovative Virtuous Angels, mm -hmm. and it's based off of Proverbs 30, mm -hmm. and the whole concept is charm is deceitful and beauty definitely fades away, mm -hmm. but a woman who honors the Lord is worthy to be praised. And the goal was to give young girls an opportunity and a platform to be able to embrace the essence of womanhood and all that it comes with. Initially, we wanted to, we were doing praise dancing, but you know, you have young girls like, I want to do hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. and I have to remember when I was younger, I wanted to be a fly girl. Right. Hands down. Okay. I wanted to jump off the speakers. I wanted to wear Daisy Dukes with Air Max, and I wanted to wear scrunchy socks that come up to my knees. Right. Dookie braids with a hat. I wanted baby hair with pro style, slick them down. Yeah. And it had to I, be the brown kind. It did, the mm -hmm. brown, because that was the only one that was going to blend in. Yeah, right. And if it burnt up, crusted up on your ear, it looked, it was okay. All right. But I wanted, to, I, I wanted to, I wanted to dance like salt and pepper. You right, know what I'm saying? Okay, and yeah. 
that was where I was and I cannot deny that mm -hmm. and one thing that significantly changed mm -hmm. was like around like the 1997 era mm -hmm. and um, the whole shift of hip-hop or women in hip-hop changed it went from you and I T.Y. MC Light all that and it shifted and all of a sudden it was like women were expected to be like sexual toys right it and went from Lauren Hill to Little Kim I, I wasn't gonna say that but I was gonna do the pose Oh. that all the boys had okay. on their um, folder. Right. And so, you know, as a 14-year-old girl, and then every guy on their folder has, like, Foxy Brown and Little Kim and, and, lots, of, and lots of provocative images of mm -hmm. girls in hip-hop. I was like, well, where, what am I supposed to do? I was like, you and I, T-Y. Mm -hmm. I wanted to wear Carl Kanai pants and a half top, but it was like, uh-uh, I needed to change. But Aaliyah helped us with she that did. as well. She kind of... You know, she she merged it. Merged yes, exactly. Yeah. She merged it, mm -hmm. and so I still felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got to college, I went to a historical uh, black college, mm -hmm. Clark Atlanta University. What up, Clark? Okay. Find a way or make HBCU. one. HBCU. So I happened to be at a club, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I got to give the breakdown. So first off, my dorm at Clark was called the Divas. Was and, it? Yes. Okay. And I didn't know they named yes. dorms like you. You. Did well, Bumstead Hall was the name of the dorm, and the mascot was the Divas. Okay. And so we embodied that to the fullest, and it was a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And that was my first understanding of what a true sisterhood meant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 200-something girls in the dorm, and we're having to live, you know, together. And um, my name was Little Sister Get Crunk because... <laughs> um, yeah, I kept the party going. Ugh. What? Yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy, you know, social media wasn't popping. I mean, I did have my Black Pan Planet page, but, um, you know, one of the things that really got me when I realized... So it's kind of, I didn't mean to interrupt you, no, but like okay. the divas, is it kind of like how you would think of what a sorority is? Because a, a lot of colleges are known for pledging. I didn't pledge particularly. I didn't pledge either. But so when you said that you have this sisterhood of girls that you're calling the divas that are all in the same, is it somewhat of your own <coughs> makeshift sorority? Okay, well, being in the dorm, mm -hmm. we were taught um, really to value, to love one another. I am my sister's keeper. And yeah, it did have some sorority traits. Okay. But more importantly, it was we're here at a, at a black college and we're being afforded opportunities that our ancestors were not able to do. We're here because of the prayers of our grandmothers. And so being that, we have to honor that and we have to understand that we're stronger together than we are by ourselves. Mm -hmm. A finger is only so strong, but a fist is much stronger. Mm -hmm. And so I developed some of the best friendships that I've ever had. I've had some of the craziest arguments too. But the, college. Yes, but okay, to be yes. able to get through that with a group of sisters, mm -hmm. I will shout them out. Kristen and Jade, I love you guys. Mm -hmm. So um, to be able to get through that really, really helped me understand that there's something going on in the world that a lot of young African-American women are missing. Mm -hmm. And that's the understanding of togetherness. Okay. And um, my little theory on that is um, black women, it all started with Hagar and Sarah, you know, back with Abraham. And uh, Sarah had the baby and she kicked Hagar out. And so we got all this baby mama drama and this lack of unity between sisters and the ability f and the inability for us to come together. So Do I, you mm -hmm. think that to that point it is because you were at a HBCU? Because I know you came, like, I'm not going to just jump ahead of your story, but no. I know you circled back and completed your degree here at Cal State yep, Dominguez and absolutely. you brought it back home. So do you think the sisterhood that you're referencing is because you were at a HBCU in a black college? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Okay. I went to, I started off going to Dominguez mm -hmm. um, and it's just predominantly black and Mexican. Mm -hmm. And then I had got a scholarship to an Upper Bound program at UC Irvine. Upper Bound, I remember that. And I went and it changed my life and I was like, Mom, if I'm going to go to college, I got to go, I got to, I got to do more. You know, and I begged my and mom Mesa. to change Mesa, do y'all remember that? I do. Mesa. I was in Upper Brown. I, mean, I was in Mesa, Mesa too. Me too. Math, Engineering, Science yes. Academy. I did. I did at Compton College. Okay. So um, definitely, I remember mm -hmm. that. So I had begged my mom to give me a different opportunity, and what I told her was, I want to be around a diverse group of people. Okay. And so I just randomly picked a school. I picked Redondo Beach, mm -hmm. and I went there, and I finished my last two high school years there. Right. And then from there, um, I didn't make the best grades, but I started 
started the dance team again at the school and created a dance club. Okay. And my college counselor told me that I didn't have the grades to go to college, so maybe I should go to Compton College. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? And I went home to my mom, she was like, no. So I photocopied a friend of mine who had black uh, HBCU applications. Mm -hmm. I just photocopied her applications because it was too late for me to try to request them. Right. So I photocopied them and was filling them out. And I got in to Clark, and I think it was because of the, all the extracurricular activities that I had going on, mm -hmm. I was a candidate. So um, I went. And I, think I think that speaks to the beauty of encouraging, because you said you wanted to do this, but it had to come from your mom initially to be in setting you that higher education was key. Yeah. You know, extracurricular activities. You weren't hanging out in the, you know, like, I mean, men. I was trying to hang out, but they wouldn't let me. But, you yeah, know. your mom sounds like she was like, mm -mm, you better find you something to do after school because the street light's coming on. Either you're going to be in a class yeah. or you're going to be in this house. Yeah, Got absolutely. You. Okay, so you started dancing around two years old. So this is something that was prevalent throughout high school, junior high, yeah, every, absolutely. It, it followed you. Absolutely. So how did it, it transpired into college. How did you know this is what I want to do professionally? Because I know you went, you went to college for education. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you still have remained a dancer throughout that. You know, it's certain things that you cannot walk away from. Okay. Like, um, I can't, as much as I want to eat healthy, I still want hot sauce, and I need to be red rooster. So it's certain things. I got hot sauce in things. my swag bag. Exactly. <laughs> I think I got some. No, okay. But Ooh. I couldn't stay away from it. I When I got to college, I was initially dancing on the dance team at Clark, and then I wanted to step. And I was like, this whole new world of step. And I was like, I want to step. You don't have step. to be in a sorority or something? To step? No, because our a dorm. That's misconception. Because our dorm had a step team. See that again? And that's, the divas. The, and that's a little bit more of the sisterhood that went to it, too. Okay. So we had a step team, and I realized that I couldn't run from it no matter what. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to take dance everywhere I went. Even though I write grants, develop youth programming, yada, yada, you yada. Grants? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> we should. So I decided that um, once I left Clark, um, and the only reason why I left Clark was it was just a lot of things. It was, it was a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. I went to college early. Mm -hmm. And I left. I took a break. And then I went back and I went to Georgia State. And then I went to Africa for a while. Oh, wow. And that's How was that experience? What did you do out there? Um, I danced. <laughs> really? Now, so, how, now, explain to me culturally. Don't go too fast through this. All right. African dances are known to be more tribal in a sense or what my perception is of what I'm seeing on TV. I've never been to Africa. So what was your experience as being a dancer for so long here and then visiting Africa and still being into dance there? What was the difference? I felt like I was at a family reunion. Okay. And the reason why was because it was like, oh my gosh, you guys do butt isolations? <sighs> Me too, right? And oh, yeah. it felt, uh, it's a clenching of the muscle. I don't know, you have to think about it. Clench, 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 right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, Ooh. right. I don't know. Can you teach you anybody go, to dance? Da, 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 da. Listen, because I mean, you know, everybody, it's not, it's a skill. You it know? is. It's a skill. Now, you know, I remember at a few weddings, you know, they want you to do all this. And I'm like, look, I'm not from Chicago. I don't know how to do that slide, <laughs> but I'm going to, you know, groove with you. But can can anybody, if you're, if you're not born with it, the and passion is. Yeah. Can, I mean, a lot of people. Want, a lot of people want to sing too. But if you're not born with the gift to sing, it's gonna be hard to sing. So it has to take some, some coordination. You, and it's gonna. It has to really come from within because okay. I feel like naturally I choreograph. Cool. Like I make up movements. I hear beats and moves come to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've never learned. No one has ever taught me this sequence of of a combo or combination of a routine. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's like divine ancestral gifts and nuggets that I get mm. just because of who God has chosen me to be. I feel like I have a connection with dance in the spiritual realm. I did it. I've known so. a lot of my friends are... Um our friends have worked with choreographers that are in entertainment, um, like Hi Hat, you know Hi Hat, and then mm -hmm. Fatima just did. She actually was one of the choreographers for the Oscars. Are you familiar with her? I'm familiar with her work. Her definitely. work, okay. So, do you feel like you could just? It's, that has to be a skill that you're just teaching people that may not know how to dance. So, what do you do when someone really doesn't have it in them, and you're told, "Look, they're an artist. They need to perform this for a song." What do you do for that? You try to build around them. Okay. You know, and the goal is, especially if you're working with an artist, you want to make sure that that artist looks good. So you want to build around them. Okay. And then 
So um, you're not going to show them up and be like, they ain't got it. Oh, no. You're no, going to work no. with them. Okay, I just no. wanted to know that you could work with me. No. Okay. Cool. But the, my goal is to really give young girls an opportunity to explore who they are through dance. I okay. mean, for me, I don't want to come out and be like, I'm a sexual being. Right. But I'm a lioness. Mm -hmm. So I'm very in tune with my essence, with my gifts, with my skills, and mm -hmm. with my talents. Mm -hmm. So um, I want young girls to understand that you can explore that, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be, you don't have to get pimped with it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to overly exploit yourself okay. with it. And then you can start to identify the type of woman you want to become, you know, because no one wants a boring What wife. is the age groups of the dance, the, um, the girls I in I take them from four to 19. Mm -hmm. Four to nineteen. Wow, yeah. that's a real range. So you started in ballet, I know, but it, it evolved. What do you teach? Is it crunk? Well, hip -hop? It's what do you fusion. call it? Mm -hmm. It's a fusion of everything. Okay. Um, we have trainers because. Okay. So it's not I, just yourself. You no, do have help. I, oh my gosh, no! I, I definitely have help. Okay. Um, I had actually quit ballet when I was little because Me I didn't too. find it fun. I quit it and started cheering for Greater Compton. I was like, I want to cheer mm -hmm. and shake. And I was like, they're not giving me no opportunities in ballet. Mm -hmm. However, growing up, I realized that uh, ballet was some foundational, was a foundation for different dance types, for jazz and different things like that. I so I end up not being able to run from it. So right now I have a really awesome crew of coaches on my team mm -hmm. um, that are trained in ballet. You mm -hmm. know, some it of my kind of centers you in the sense of like just the plies. It's almost like how yoga is a meditation. Right. Like sometimes if you're just ready to be like rah rah. It can be like that, but I'm glad that you said that because it's not about saying that it's not what it is. It's just you were driven I was. and pulled into something And then else. I wanted to explore different things. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get stuck, so I did everything okay. from from track to dance to hip-hop to cheer to stepping. Mm -hmm. Right now, even one of my coaches is training me. Shots out, Ebony Ty, because... Hi, Ebony. You should have got me with you. You know what? She has work to her. do. She's a working woman, so she I had work you. to do. So, shots out to all my coaches. Romeo, Faith, Coach Michael, all mm -hmm. you guys. Love it. They were so excellent. We're going to... You know what? I'm going to break this up a little bit because I want them to see a little bit. All right, let's do, do it. Let's do it. We're going to show them a little video. Can we do that? I think so. It would be nice. It would be nice, huh? So introduces you got the divas of Compton, and then also you have. Do you split it up in age groups? And one is called the dolls. I think no, they're no? never called Darlings? the dolls. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I just I, I needed to know. She said I asked you that. Right. No. So we have three different age groups. Okay. The darling divas uh, is ages four to seven. Okay. The dazzling divas is ages eight to eleven. Okay. And the divine divas is ages twelve to nineteen. Got it. And that's the, it, that's the it, only it. reason. You know, you split them up for age uh, because we're identifying each each age group focuses on different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't have my four-year-olds thinking they're going to do what my 18-year-olds or my 17-year-olds I know your little four-year-old can do anything that you could do, though. And that's only because she is at every single rehearsal. She's so she's hunt. doing them all. We, do we have a clip of Miss... Miss What's her name? She, Anaya. And she's Anaya, here. and she's here. We're going to... Miss Anaya's going to be back in here with us because Miss Anaya... <laughs> Knows how to cut up. I know Kendrick was like, hey. He was cracking up laughing. He was cracking up. They were, I mean, from mommies and daddies. We're going to play this, but we're going to get that clip of the night. Okay. Too. I mean, you know, she stole the show. She did. I'm she excited. stole the show. I'm grateful. Okay, so let's show a little bit of this clip, and then we're going to look for a clip of Anaya, and we're going to get Anaya up in here. All right. Can I Yesterday my nigga had told me his brother died A day before that his home his uncle was cold outside A week before he seen the cancer in his mother's eyes Two weeks before they could pay his rent cause he lost his job A month before that he lost the custody of his daughter Six months before that her mother said she won't see her father And this before he did a year when them charges was brought up I shook my head, turned around and found a hundred dollars I don't know why he keep blessing me 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 I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why I don't know why he keep blessing me 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 I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why So I can bless you So I can bless you So I can bless you Here is temporary, so 
who I'm talking to you. This sick world, I drive my same and crazy. Girls dropping all this hat and they find the babies. And this the news I hear. But my God, kids, nieces, and nephews turning fear. I wonder will it get better? The Divas of Compton, mm -hmm. and yourself, and the Royal. Yes, the one Royal, who Mr. Was Isaiah. I, Mr. Isaiah, shout out to you, who put on an excellent show. I mean, I know there were other performers there, and not to take anything from them, but when somebody steals the show, you steal <laughs> the show. Everybody was like, "Yes!" Oh, I was like, God. "We had to stand up and all of that." So it was just so awesome. Um, so getting back to what we were talking about and just your influence in dance and, oh, I think you have a caller though. We do want to take that caller, right? We're going we're gonna to keep talking because I also need um, headphones and stuff. Okay. Because you're not going to Turn me up in my head. Turn me up on my mic, yo. Um, but yes, um, we were talking about, mm -hmm. well, you know, I lose my train of thought so often and when I thought about something else, I forgot. But we were saying that when we went to... Ghana, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is. So I was so excited about the performance, and I was thinking about Miss Anaya. But um, so when you went to Ghana, you felt like it was kind of like a family reunion, like they embraced you. What were you out there particularly to do? Because you were, you were, um, it was a, a dance group with. Yeah, okay. I went with my university, okay. um, Professor Masiki Scales, okay, um, from Georgia State University and the Common Ground Collective. That's a um, an Afro jazz band mm -hmm. and so I went out there to perform alongside with them and to showcase the similarities between jazz dance forms and African dance forms and we were performing for Ghana's 50th year anniversary of independence mm -hmm. and when I went there I absolutely fell in love with the place I was you know always looking for something and Ghana is so rich in history in terms of the slave castles and it's one of the last locations where Africans were taken before they were transferred and brought over to the Americas. Mm -hmm. So there's so much rich history there that I found myself drawn to the country and I decided to go back and live for a while. You did? And How I, long? I, about, I don't know, maybe like five, six months. So I was just... How was I the food? Back. Like that's how big Oh, well, to tell you the truth, the food is amazing. Mm. Uh, everything was organic. Mm -hmm. I was trying to bring seeds back. I was like, I'm going to plant these. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, I got stopped. Um, the op she tried it, though. <laughs> I, I tried it. You tried it. Like, let me what see what I it saw do. was the fashion. They were they were more fashion forward than where we were. Really? They, have, they had access to... Um, there was different embargo trade and things that were lifted where here, over here in America, we don't get access to trade with lots of other countries. I was like, everybody's hair was done. You would think, you know, over here in America, we've been taught to think that they're going to have flies in their eyes mm -hmm. and they're going to have big giant bellies. Mm -hmm. But no, their dollar was higher than the American dollar. Let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. The people, the working class people like us were living very well. Right. 
and the food was off the chain amazing mm -hmm. and I loved it and I absolutely want to go back I want to actually do business there I want to start a performing arts school there so that's something that I'm working towards in the next three to five years so you're working towards you ha you have a studio that you work out of yes. but you're looking for another studio because you've kind of outgrown it what um I know that you are taking donations I don't know if you have a nonprofit or something but we you do, do have, you do we so do why don't we announce that because I want our well we want to take a caller because I I don't want them to. Wait. Go ahead. But we yeah. want to talk about Absolutely. how we'll they can donate and get part, be a part of it. Hello, caller. How you doing? It's Beauty and the Bee. You got Professor Kells from Divas of Compton. How are you doing? Hello. Mm. So Hello. Hi. I, how you hello. I heard him. I heard him. Hello. Well, yourself? Hi. Hi. You I have a question for Miss Kelly. We love what you're doing. Um, but I have a question. Yes. What are your future plans to further inspire the youth? Um, the goal is to really create um, a performing arts academy where kids can come and receive performing arts skill as well as leadership and perform and leadership and academic enhancement. The goal really is to create a community center in the same format that you have the Boys and Girls Club. Mm. We want to be able to create a safe haven for the youth, not just somewhere where they can come and dance because after a while, what can you do with the dance, you know, if they're not getting anything? So the goal is to really expose the girls to different opportunities that in the performing arts realm that will help them achieve their dreams outside of high school. So we try to encourage some of the girls, get some of these summer scholarships to some of these universities so you can build your portfolio up. Um, go ahead and uh, five of our girls last year had got scholarships to Debbie Allen Summer Dance Academy um, as well as the year before one of our girls got a scholarship to UC Irvine for their summer dance intensive where they were able to stay on campus for three weeks in a dorm and these are things that will help build their portfolio and their resume oftentimes you get you have people doing dance just for recreational purposes but the divas is a, a resource and we use it as a tool to, to give young girls an opportunity to explore performing arts but to gain essential leadership skills so to answer your question we want a community Center. So while we have her on the air, so you can know as well, you have a GoFundMe, or how can people stay involved in what your project are? You have divasofcompton.org. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. They okay. can check us out at divasofcompton.org. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit organization. You can please donate to the movement. Um, we also yeah, have OneShineYouth.com, which is the number one, ShineYouthYouth.com, and we do after-school programming, summer camp, different leadership programming. The goal should be holistic with the children. We could teach them to dance all day long, but at the end of the day, what else can we impart into the children? And it's so funny because... Now a lot of my girls are teenagers, whereas four years ago we didn't have as many teenagers. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we're being exposed to all these different teen issues mm -hmm. and we're having to find creative ways to make sure that we are addressing the issues without letting them go to the wayside. Because what I may think may not be a big deal, like a girl may feel a certain way or she had a bad day at school and I'd be like, girl, brush that off. So what? Yes. So what they said that about you? The way they feel about it is completely different. So finding ways to... Um, meet them where they are so that we can continue to build and edify them. That's our goal. Because, I mean, I like that you bring the Christian aspect of it, and that's kind of like just bringing it back to the, I'm sorry, um, Gospel Goes to Hollywood and how they encourage faith with what they're doing in the Hollywood realm. You're encouraging faith within what they're doing. So in every aspect of each grade, like even when you're getting, getting these girls, when they enter into the teenagehood, yes. puberty, and all of that. So you're teaching them as they, you know, how do you tell a, a female that's feeling like she's getting breasts and hips and stuff that she can't shake it like a salt shaker. You know what? I, I send them to my diva moms. I send them to my admin. I'd be like, y'all deal with this today. Right, and I'd right. be like, Tish, handle not just plan. But, um... It's hard, mm -hmm. but I had to remember how I was at 14, and mm -hmm. I'd be like, ooh, good thing I ain't got to tell y'all no stories. <laughs> but I remember, no, I wasn't crazy, but I was very you sassy. Were crazy. Oh, oh, wait, wait, oh, hold on. Oh. Who is this now? Who is this? This is Tish. Oh, hi, Tish. Oh, and I Hello. just, I didn't know she was on the phone. I shouted you out. Hey. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. so yeah, all right. You well, were. I can't lie. She know me. I all right. All right, so I was a little sassy, mm -hmm. but I had to remember, I have to remember that at the same time, there was a group of women that were holding me accountable, you know, whether it's my mom, my sister, Tish. 
yes, and dance was an outlet for me. And I mean, I hate to sound crazy, but sometimes through dance, the girls are able to identify with their sexual expression mm -hmm. because they have it at 13. We cannot deny it. I'm not going to lie. I can't be like, don't feel that way, girl. Don't even look at that boy. Right. I can't. I can't make them hide or shame from it. But they're, they are able to explore and express themselves through dance but we try to curve it like i mean i'm not gonna be like you know get on the floor and you know start humping looking crazy right. but the goal is they happen to be of a culture that uses their mid region for dance and it is artistic and i can't help it that we are built like cornbread Right, I get it, but even in the same sense, as the teacher, you 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 notice that and you recognize that that's what they're going through as women. But you still try to make it a creative expression. It's not like you're exactly. You know, we tell them don't be thirsty because right. you already got the juice. I guess. And you. be the type of woman that men want to marry, not the type of woman that they just want to screw. There's gotcha. a clear difference. I like that. So you're teaching skills and thirsty. life skills and all of that yes. along the way. It's not just dance. Oh, it's not just dance. It's encouragement. It's, it's definitely it's life skills. And let me tell you I'm growing mm -hmm. because I'm 33 mm -hmm. but sometimes when I'm dealing with the young girls it's it's a moment of transparency for me sometimes mm -hmm. I if I if I've done something wrong it takes the girls to be like well you know Miss Barry you made me feel this way and I was like oh really and you okay recognize it. Let me grow in right. this instance. So as opposed to being stuck in my ways, mm -hmm. I have to open up myself to continue to not only be a teacher, but I'm also still a student. I'm still learning. They come to me. I'm dabbing now. I do the dab. I be like, dab on Look them. at my dab. Right. So they teach me. At yes. the same time I'm teaching them, they're constantly teaching me. Okay, so tell us a little bit about... Uh, with are you the caller gonna stay on with us the whole time? Oh, I don't Tish, know. you gonna stay with us the whole time? <laughs> we don't want to just keep. Sure. Talking. Okay, okay, okay. So how did the? Um, I know that you were on the top of the third season with Lifetime with the show Bring It. Yes. Okay, it was called Straight Out of Jackson. Even though you straight out of Compton, but right. you participated yes, in that. Yes, we did. Tell us how that came about. Uh, all right. So um, that came about because we had actually got an opportunity to go on the show in. May of 2015. Okay. But we weren't a feature on the show. We okay. were just going to a competition that they happened to be filming at. And after the competition, I guess, well, at the competition, um, what I do, what we do with the girls is we give them chance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like affirmations. But chance? Since, chance. Like, like, I'm young, ring, 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 No, uh-uh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, um... Compton Divas. They have like raps oh, and chants. Okay. Back to the sisterhood thing I'm telling you that I got from college. Got you, got you. So um, they had chants and stuff. And one of the things that they did was they did a chant on the bus that I taught them. Mm. And li I, Lifetime liked it. Or, you know, I guess that's what got the, it got us airtime. Okay, yes, it got, got us airtime. Mm -hmm. And we were very, very live on the bus. And I have a habit of turning up one time. Compton Divas. Exactly. <laughs> I have a habit of turning up one time when the cameras get to rolling. Okay. Because that's natural. Right, right, right. So I, uh, I guess they liked it. And afterwards, we, um, they called us back. Mm -hmm. And we went back for a competition, for a battle. And one of the things that a lot of our girls like to do is a battle style of dancing, which is very popular here mm -hmm. on the West Coast. So we went back for a battle. And it was very good for the girls to be able to get the opportunity because a lot of them have it. And they were recognized for their talent. Right, and gotcha. they were able to be recognized for their talent. So we're excited about the doors that were open. Mm -hmm. um, the dancing dolls, it was it was good for the girls to be able to go there, to meet them, to have good sportsmanship. It was just all around, it was a good experience. Our girls needed the needed the opportunity to be able to show the world what they're about. And get outside exactly. of their... their um Neighborhood. Exactly. Outside, outside, of, of, outside of Compton. Outside so. of Compton. We have another caller. Let me take this caller. Hi. Hi. Hey, Beauty and the Bee Radio. You're on with Professor Kells. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You have a question? Yeah, well, I just have a comment. This is um, Professor Smith. Kelly, how are you doing, Professor Kells? I'm good. How are you, Professor Smith? I'm doing Smith? absolutely fabulous. I wanted to let you know just how happy I am to see you in your element. Thank I'm you. I'm just extremely ecstatic for you and um and uh your husband and everything else that's going on over there you are doing a fabulous job i really appreciate it professor smith i appreciate it so much 
Yeah, and just watching what you do, is it brings tears to my eyes oh. at the time. And getting to know you over at Lifeline was probably one of the okay. brightest lights in oh. my educational wow. career. Thank you. Thank you. I was. I do remember teaching at Lifeline, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to have taught there. Um, mm -hmm. That really, and establishing the divas over there as well. Um, yeah. Lifeline really I gave know, me an opportunity. I, I see them grow, and it's just, it's just amazing to me the things that you're doing out there in Compton, and, and God bless you for that. Thank you. God bless you as well. All right. You have a great day. Thank you, too. Thank you, Professor, for calling. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So we're talking about, you know, you're very influential to adults, teens, youth. You have a lot of people that are inspired by your work. Is that what gave you the, because you, it seems as though once you started, you've never stopped dancing. It's kind of never left. So now do you pursue it full time or do you still teach? How does that work or how do you balance that? <clears throat> well, I had recently, well, as of, what was that, January? I, I left I left teaching. I decided okay. to stop teaching at a school that I was teaching at. Okay. What Mad did you teach? I teach English. I teach all all subjects okay. basically. Okay. Well, I was teaching English, science, and history. Okay. Um, in Manhattan Beach, and I decided to leave because I found myself doing more work mm -hmm. for the divas and for the not for the nonprofit mm -hmm. as opposed to the schoolwork, and that's just where I was driven to okay. most of the time. So I took a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And I kind of put the pressure on my husband because I left my job and, you know, he looked at me crazy for a minute. You know, I had to... Like, where your check at? Yeah, but I, once I made that fish and grits and, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You know, he was good after that. So, uh -oh. <laughs> but um, um, it's... It's a sacrifice. It is. It's okay. definitely a sacrifice. But you have a lot of good things going. Do we have a um, Miss... Is it Anaya? Anaya. Did we find Anaya? Clip? Yeah, he did. I see it. Oh, uh, we're going to play Miss Anaya from the husband that is giving you all this elite. Um, well, we have <coughs> another caller. You popping. <laughs> all right. She popping. Anaya's have... in the studio. She in the building. I'm going to bring her in, you guys. Anaya. Bring her in well, in you going to have to bring her in okay. quick. Okay, but we're going to play this clip of Anaya and then we're going to get back to this caller. Show them what the dancing. This is a, she's the dancing doll. No, no, she's a darling diva. Darling diva. Okay, don't let me announce nothing. All right. Okay. She's a diva. Everyone say that. Can you get her? Yes, yes, yes. Miss <laughs> Anaya is coming in. We saw her turn up. See, she knows how to do that dance. So has she been watching you since she At, since she was born? Yeah. Out the womb, so, soon she as I dancing. Soon as I had her. Um, I was teaching, mm -hmm. and I started the Divas at a charter school in Compton. Okay. And I couldn't take a break. She was what three months, and three I was months. I was nursing her at the practice. Like I would nurse her. I would take the playpen okay. to rehearsal with me. I would nurse her, put her down, and start teaching. And she just went everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. So I decided that that was how I wanted to raise her. I wanted her to be right where I was, mm -hmm. you know. So I took her. She goes everywhere with me. So as a result, did she go to Ghana? No, yeah, was that born. was right before. Okay. She wants to go. She's trying to go. Really? So I will take her back. I just want her to be a little bit older before she gets immunizations and different things. Before I gotcha. do international travel, I want her to be a little bit older. But she's been with me everywhere. And my older son, um, he's seven. He likes to break dance, and but he's more into capoeira. So What's he wants um, Brazilian martial arts meets Angola, African martial arts. It's a... Mixture you probably of the know two about that, huh? um, coming out of like Brazil and West Africa from Angola. It's like the African martial arts, but it's dance mm -hmm. to rhythm and mm -hmm. as well as um, a form of tribal fighting. But it's, he loves it and he thinks he's he wants to be a ninja. Okay. So yeah. Ninja side. I'm with oh, okay. that. I mean, I think I could. I could. Get uh, I think she might want to see if she's in the car. She's somewhere around oh, here. Oh, Naya. It's a black car right out in the front, or maybe they eating in the bistro. I'm not sure. So you're currently directing um, your dance training center, and mm -hmm. you want to expand. What's the ultimate goal? Are you coming back to Lifetime this season? Are, you can't tell us. I mean, you're gonna have to wait and see. Uh oh, uh oh. Excuse me. I hit up. You like? Mm -mm. Well, we we enjoyed you so much on there. I can't see them not enjoying you. Back. Wait, but you're gonna have to check her out and see. 
follow we her. We will see. Follow you. So how do we follow you, stay in touch, get involved with your organization? Well, right now, you guys, mm -hmm. we are in need of donations for the girls. We mm -hmm. have a, a yes. large number of girls, mm -hmm. and there's so many opportunities on the horizon for them mm -hmm. in terms of traveling. Um, and we, we need help. I mean, from shoes to stockings to hair to bras to undergarments. Do you have sponsors? Yeah, we do have sponsors. Okay. And um, the City of Compton has been so gracious, and also the City of Compton Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. has been so gracious to sponsor the Divas in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now, we're just asking for individuals. If you have $5 please don't go to Starbucks. Just donate it because $5 goes a long way. If you got $25, instead of getting a fill, or if you just happen to see a shirt, mm. or shirt at the store, please send it to us so that we can help some young girls. You can donate to us. You can hit us up on our Instagram, which is also Divas of Compton. You can hit us up on Facebook, mm -hmm. Divas of Compton. You can also go to our website, www.divasofcompton.org. You can also reach us on our alternate website, which is www.oneshineyouth.com. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit organization, so anything that you donate to us will be tax deducted or it's tax deductible so please if you have a heart you are planting in good soil and the girls need it so thank you and you're also holding competition team um auditions aren't you well no? we, we just had them oh you had we them just, already we okay. just had them so the next uh tryouts will be in may okay um so you can check us out and if you'd like to pre-register please go online and pre-register mm -hmm. once you pre-register we'll have your information on file and then in may when we do uh competition auditions again we'll go ahead and reach out to you so that you can be ready so so yeah. you're inspiring the youth to be leaders in their community as, as well as on the floor. As on far the floor. As we, want, we want them to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We want them to be scholars. Um, over 80% of our girls have um, are on the honor roll. Okay. And our captains are on the honor roll. Like, we really try to instill in them. Education. Yes, education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have mothers uh, emailing me and texting me and like, you did say 9 o'clock. Make oh. sure they're studying. And I have to be accountable because, you know, right. I'll be like, run it again. To, you have, Do it again. Right. And they have, we have one more conversation for you come on let's get this caller hi you're calling beauty and the Bee with professor kales how are you hello hello yeah this is davon hi davon how are you i'm doing excellent i just wanted to give a shout out to professor kales i'm from the city of compton and i noticed that she's been really changing the lives of the young sisters and brothers that she's been involved with her and her husband as well they've been really doing some positive things in the community and we just want to let you know thank you for just like changing, you know, the lives of a lot of young people in Compton, you know, has a bad rap of just being violent and all these different things. But, you know, you guys are really trying to help create a counterculture for our young people. We mm. appreciate that. Thank you. We I appreciate, appreciate you for it. calling in as well. You sound fine. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. You know, you yeah. married, so you got to be careful what you say. I heard you got a husband and things. You sound just like him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Hey. Hi, hubby. Hi, daddy. No, I'm just playing. Ooh. All right. I'm just all right, kidding. All right, all right, all right. I know. Thank you for the shout out. Thank you for the shout out, Mr. Yes. Davon. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, Thank I appreciate you. that, and Miss Anaya has joined us. Hi, how are you? Come on over here, Anaya. Mm -hmm. Well, we love that. We have everybody following you. We're going to go out because we have to show a little bit of our Oscar coverage. Hi. You could be in this. You going to tell us how you like the dresses and stuff? Yes. How you doing? Hey, are you okay? We just watched you on TV. They saw you dancing. She's like, I got this. She's just so busy right. looking. So I want to get into, we went to Roger Neal's. Um, it was called the Roger Neal Style Hollywood Couture Gifting Suite. And I want to show a little bit of that, where we got into it. And that was right around Oscar weekend, where we got to mix and mingle and go. We didn't go to the Oscars. Did you get a chance to check? You said you did. Yeah, check a little bit. I only checked out a little bit. I just, you know, I've, I've been so get busy. Into Mm -hmm. So it, it's hard to try to have time to watch TV. Something and, that's three and four hours. Yeah. Go ahead and get into that video. Jimmy and Daniel. 
know, I came into this world to do lashes, make people beautiful outside and inside. Tell them how, how many, tell them whose lashes you do. Everybody. I do everybody, people for the heaven, for the hell too. Oh! Serene Styles with Beauty and the Beat, and I want to talk to you about your fabulous fashion. We do a lot of limited editions. I also have gowns from different designers. Vintage couture. Yes. And you can look at our website to see everything. Oh! Yes. And we were going to get into some of this wine that you have here, and then I find out that you have a Laramar. Am I saying it right? Laramar Winery, and that is in Temecula. Tell us about that. Temecula is a lovely little town about 90 miles from here. It takes about an hour and a half to get. And, you know, we're only about an hour away from Orange County. We're 45 minutes from North County, uh, San Diego. So it's a great destination to come for a day or for the weekend. And there's about 40 wineries, mine being one of the most special, of course, because it's mine. And we got Madeline from Hook Me Up. You're going to tell us a little bit about all this fancy portable chargers for smartphones and tech devices that you have? I am. Uh, Hook Me Up Swiss created out of my brainchild of keeping tech and style on the go. We always run out of a battery on our cell phone, so this is a solution. They're clean, they're fun, they're fashionable, mm -hmm. and they're affordable. Okay, what's the price point for them? $24.99 to $94.99. Okay, and, and then do you have a website? We do. Okay. We have Hook Me Ups. Dot com, okay. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Shop Hook Me Ups. Shop Hook Me Ups and HookMeUps.com. Yes. What's going on with you? We up here in pre-Oscar weekend. How do you like the... Um, you I'm having that? a great, great, wonderful time. Uh, yes, I really am. My dear friend, Sonia, mm -hmm. my, he was also my neighbor. She invited us to come up, and I'm just so happy I did. At first, I said, no, I don't want to go. I'm not a movie star. This is about the Oscars, and they're going to look down on me because I'm not a movie star. But everyone's been so nice, so sweet, so respectful, and so positive. Yeah, you know, they understand that we've been out here a long, long time, and they give us a lot of good love, and I appreciate that. I'm jealous of some of these women out here. They're looking too good for me. I'm gonna have to kill. I'm gonna have to kill somebody. You already said it. I'm happy. Well, you know, Suri Styles, Beauty and the Bee here, and I got Anthony Cherry, celebrity hairstylist. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? So, um, what are you doing here today? We got what is this pre-Oscar weekend? Yeah, I'm just fell through with a couple of friends, Joy Slusive, Michelle Epps, and Lurgo Vaughn, just getting around our day. We've been to different gifting suites today. We went to Converse first. Um, got a lot of great things. I got a lot of great things. You know, I was well, right. Converse got some new stuff going on because, you know, they never did collaborations and they did something with what? With Khalifa? Yeah, and Masoni. <laughs> they doing it. It's over that fast. That was our little Oscar uh, preview that we did, I mean, I'm not preview, the weekend that we went to, um, it was so many Oscar parties going on, Vanity Fair, the Governor's Ball, um, but shout out to Chris Rock, I think, for doing an amazing job, for really just kind of bringing, just not, even when I was on the red carpet, I really tried not to ask that question, I tried to, a roundabout way, people were really sick of it, they really, I mean, and I saw so many people being validated for their talent for the women's brunch that Essence put on, acknowledging the women in Hollywood. That was I mean, Oprah came out, Kim Whitley, um, a lot, I mean, I, I would be on and on and on with the names, but I mean, they really did a good job of honoring them, and they had two or three events that week. Then you went, Russell Simmons did the All Deaf Digital the same day that aired on Fusion, and he honored people that were not likely. Some of the, it was kind of like a comedic take on it, but it still was very serious in what its, you know, objective was. And then um, Nia Long got honored, um, awesome. Lexus. Yeah, so I mean, I saw so many people being recognized for their talents that it's, it's with a black president of the um, American, um, what do you call the Oscars? The a American Motion Academy? Yeah, the Academy. I like to think the Academy. I don't have to say everything. But I just know that we had this conversation last year about diversity when Selma was, you know, at its 50 year anniversary. And it's coming up again. But I think that the strides are being made. We had a black producer of the segment, Reginald Hutland. You had r black writers. You had so many black hosts. I mean, it was as integrated as I think that it could be, other mm -hmm. than as far as, you know, Mad Max, I had never seen that movie or heard of it, ran off with almost all of them. Congratulations to Leo and all the other people. If we had more times, I would show you the fashion. So now I'm gonna have to save it for IG or the web or something because we can't, we don't even have time to do no fashion. 
But I see purple is your daughter's color and your color. Does that, because it represents royalty, what is Absolutely. it with you and purple? Absolutely. So, um, normally my favorite colors is yellow, mm -hmm. gold, mm -hmm. um, light gold, mm -hmm. dark yellow, okay. burnt orange so I'm basically with colors that represent the Sun okay but purple to me is a royal color and I wanted to make sure that if no one else tells these young girls that they're royal at least they're embodying it okay. without even knowing it okay. and so we want to make sure that they understand who they are and whose they are and so that's why we chose the color purple okay I got it I like it okay well we're about to close this on out I thank you Kelly I have had Professor a blast Professor Kells thank you. I thank you for inspiring our youth and giving so many young women the opportunity to do something when they might not have anything else to do. it right? takes a village I can't I cannot stand and take the credit because it takes a village mm -hmm. and without my admin team mm -hmm. um, those who believe in me that work volunteer who volunteer their hours I mean countless of hours because right. we went from so everyone that um, really is teaching classes there is a volunteer basis well uh, you can't get everybody to, to, to give up their talent if that's what they do professionally right. and as of lately we brought on um, professional choreographers as well mm -hmm. um, in terms of handling the business aspect of it mm -hmm. because Although I consider myself a businesswoman, I am a choreographer, and sometimes the business aspect hinders my, my creativity. And so I, I had gotten to the point where I was able to get a co-director and a team mm -hmm. of people to really come in and help do some of the admin work so that I could focus more so on the, well, creative, on the creative side. side. And then, you know, dibble and dabble back and forward. That's so, why we need you to donate. That's why we need you to donate because the kids need, they're in need of mm -hmm. so much. Um, and I mean, sponsors as well, like absolutely. additional sponsors, not just in kind. Investors. Investors. How about that? We want a Put, building in the city check. of Compton. Write a check. Or Talk if you me. own property in the city of Compton. Absolutely. And you're doing that, like, maybe we can make that a facility. We Get can. the word out. Let's do it. I have a proposal already ready to go. I know you so do, Miss Grant Ryder. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so happy that you came out. Thank um, you. I wish you the best. I wish everyone you're working with the best um, and success. We're gonna look out and see where we can see what you got going on because you didn't want to yes, share. Yes, please. You do. didn't want to <laughs> spill the beans. You kept that in your pocketbook or something, but it's cool. We but, got some things coming up, and we're really excited about all of the things that are coming our way. So definitely stay tuned. Okay. Um, stay in touch with the Divas of Compton mm -hmm. because we're coming to impact the community in a positive way so stay tuned stay tuned when follow uh, divas of compton instagram divas. twitter it's all the same divas of compton because there really is no other team or there is no other program like ours right. in the city of compton performing arts and leadership and divas of Compton. Divas of Compton. And follow Beauty and the Beat Radio when you yes, feel Beauty styles. and the Beat. Beauty and the Beat. Yes, thank you. Thank and you we're guys. Out.